Hi everybody, Ryan Townsend here with Berserk Custom Paint and in today's video I'm going to show you a little time-lapse demonstration of this portrait I did of Katy Perry. Uh, basically it's just going to be full of a bunch of tips. I'm going to kind of walk you through the steps I took, uh, some of the colors that I used. If you guys have any questions, uh, just post them down in the uh, comment section. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, also, I want to encourage you guys to go to BerserkCustomPaint.com. Uh, that's our website. We're going to try to update that as much as possible. Also, if you want, you can add me at Facebook on uh, at Town Townsend Ryan eighty four at yahoo.com. That's my Facebook account. Um, I'd love to hear what your input is about my videos. Also, if you have anything that you'd like to see in a future video, I'm trying to make as many as I can. Um, just let me know what you think. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this one. Thanks. All right, what I'm doing now is I sprayed a white base over the whole image and I've masked off the background. The background's already done. Uh, and here you can see me tracing using graphite paper, uh, tracing my outlines, my guidelines basically, onto my white base that I've painted on. All right, I've started with the lightest shade of her skin tone and I'm gonna go ahead and work the entire piece as if it was almost like a black and white. I'm going to work the whole piece everywhere her skin is and uh, just to build a texture. And it's also kind of sketching in so I see where all my lines go. This is the lightest color I can find of her face. You want to, in my, in my experience and in my opinion, you work from light to dark. You, you start with the lightest shade and then you slowly add more color to that one and you build, um, you just, you build your color and you build your texture that way. Here, I'm, you've seen me use eraser occasionally, like right there. Um, what I'm doing is I'm preserving my whites. You don't want to add um, white to it at the end to bring back your highlights, because that's going to milk out your piece, and milk out your color. So if I preserve my whites with an eraser, um, I don't have to add white on top of the color. So, And there you see I added red to my lighter shade. I had that beige skin tone to start off with, which is really close to white. And I added red to it and still just building color, building texture, working the whole thing, you know, covering up even most of the lines that I've already made. But that's how you get your texture. You can see through, you know, you can see what I did the first time through the red that I've already added. That's where you get, you know, kind of a fleshy feel to it. And also since it's a, a kind of a feminine look, you want it to be a little more soft focus. If this was a male portrait, it would probably be a little more rough with my lines because women of course you want to have a very feminine look so you're a little softer with your eyes. Here I think I've added a little bit of blue to it. So I started off with my light shade of beige or peach and I added red. So and now I've added blue so it's getting kind of a purple tone. You know still I haven't added any solid color. Most of my mixture was white right now. slowly building from layers, layers, layers. And also a lot of sketching is going on here. There you go, using the eraser, preserving my whites, not adding them. Pretty much once you put that white base down on the bottom, there's not very many times where you're going to go back and add white back in there again. Here, that's the same picture that I used to transfer. I cut out her face to use it as a mask for the, for the back behind her hair. That way I can pull my strokes from from onto the mask and it makes it look like the hairs behind her face. Here I've added a little bit of blue even onto her uh, skin because there's going to be a reflection from the light. You can see it in my reference photo. The reflection from the blue in her hair onto her face. And now it looks like I've made a little bit of more brown into my mixture. Once again building layers. Finding my color from the reference material. You'll notice I keep my reference material always as close to where I'm working as possible to limit my, uh, you know, how to limit the, the distance that my eye travels, because you can. There's a lot of information lost if 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 I had the reference photo a little further away from my eyes, you know, it's easier to miss little things. So you want to keep your reference photo as close as possible to the image you're working on. Here I'm working her. I'm 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 actually adding the detail into her eyes now. Um, 
I'm treating her eyes just as I'm about to do with her mouth as its own miniature, you know, it's a picture within a picture. I work her entire eyes as one, you know, at the same time. You know, I've forgotten about the rest of the painting for right now. I'm focusing on a smaller, I guess in simpler terms, I've broken down my picture into a, into a smaller picture. That's not too confusing. All right, now I've added a little more brown in my mixture, just adding a little more texture, deepening in those shadows. Now you can see your face is starting to take shape now. All right, adding a little color into her eyebrows. On those bottom layers, you want to work through her eyebrows and then add the color later. All right, now I've moved on to her mouth. And like I said before, I'm working this entire, you know, her whole mouth as if it's, you know, a smaller photo within my bigger picture. So most of my focus right now is on her lips and nothing else. There I actually added white back in because I made a mistake and covered up too much white. Um, when you do that, if you do make a mistake and you have to add white back in it, you pretty much have to start from the bottom layer again in order to to get a consistent blend. So if I were to spill white, say on her cheek, then I would have to start back with my original color and, and work back into the darker color that I have in order to fix that. All right, here I am masking off her clothes. Katy Perry, what the clothes that she wears, I guess her style is that she wears skin tight, almost painted on looking clothes. Uh, her top and her so what I'm doing is masking off every section of every color on there and uh, shading accordingly each color should get its own set of shading like its own colors to shade with you shouldn't in other words you shouldn't work like say black to use as your shade over the whole piece it's gonna have a charcoal look if you do that which I guess is fine if that's what you're after, but if you're going for a little more realism, you don't really want to use black very much at all. Not, not until you get to the very, very end, and you'll even still just use it a little bit. All right, masking her face back off again because I decided to put some blue candy into her hair. Uh, the candy, it's going to make her hair a lot brighter, almost like it's lit. You know, backlit with a light or something. And if you're familiar with candy, you know that it really has a good effect when it has clear on top of it. So I masked off her face again so I could add that candy in there. There I've added a little black, touching it into her pupils and then a little bit into her eyes because she's wearing mascara. That's pretty much the only time you'll ever see me use black is in the eyes or maybe a little bit in the hair or pupils. Once again, of course, if there's black on the trim of her clothing, I'll use it there too. So that's what I'm doing right now, just masking off the trim. It's all pretty much freehand from here. I'm just adding the black. I'd like to take this time to go ahead and talk about my PSI and the airbrushes that I'm using. I'm using a Awada Eclipse airbrush. Um, since it's such a big piece, I think the Awada Eclipse works best. Um, also, uh, my air pressure is at about maybe 17 PSI. And my paint reduction is about 75% reducer. So I keep it pretty thin. That way my layers, I, don't know, I, I, I just prefer to work that way. A lot of t-shirt artists, I know they, they use a different... They're a little more different about how they, their PSI and their paint reduction. But I've, I pretty much only work on metal and cars, and this is the way I prefer. All right, just adding the finishing touches, add a ring on there. And that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I've tried to add a little, as much detail as I can. There's your finished product right there. Um, don't forget to go to uh, BerserkCustomPaint.com and Give me some of your input on what you thought about the video. I appreciate it. Uh, check me out later. Thanks.